the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. In this ever evolving world of software testing, where the continuous learning and adaptation are key to success, there are chances that people can overlook or ignore or maybe uh, neglect a couple of very important aspects of software testing and learning. So today I have a, a well-known speaker and my friend Prashant with me. I'll straight away ask you, Prashant, I'm yeah. talking about what are the things that people are ignoring, the things mm -hmm. which are pretty much neglected, but they play important role. Uh, if you can just guide us on uh, specifically four things, because it's four for four shortcast. So what according sure. to you will be those uh, those things which are less, I mean, they are important, mm. but people are giving less importance to them. Okay, very interesting question. Uh, so in my opinion, the four things that uh, people overlook, especially testers overlook are, mm. uh, number one, it's the skill of bug reporting and advocacy. Uh, a primary work product of a tester is his bug report. Absolutely. And there are a lot of things that happens when you write bad bug reports. It not only causes back and forth of information, but it also, uh, you know, wastes time of the time of the developer and more importantly, damages the reputation of the tester. Again, bug reporting is just not enough. Writing good bug reports is not enough. It's also important that the testers learn how to influence their stakeholders to fix that bugs. So this is the first thing that I think the testers ignore these days. The second thing is critical thinking. Yeah. Critical thinking is our bread and butter, right? Software testing is critical thinking applied to software products. So critical thinking is the ability to think clearly, think rationally. If you have information, ability to process it and make sense of that information and make rational decisions of that information that you have is uh, critical thinking. And to learn critical thinking, testers will have to you know, actively listen. They will have to learn the art of questioning. They will have to learn about how our mind works. They have to learn about biases, mm. how they come to when you are uh, testing software. So mm. these are some of the aspects that we as testers often overlook. Uh, and the next thing is, the number three is uh, the ability to communicate the business value of testing. And business owners or the decision makers do not really understand testing because they come from different backgrounds. Many of them are not from a testing background, nor do, do they have time to understand testing. Right. And in fact, they misunderstand testing many times. So it's important that we as testers make our work visible and also learn the ability to speak the language of the business. Mm. Okay. So we as testers need to speak the business language and help our business understand how testing is able to help the business achieve its objectives. To give you a simple example, if I say, uh, you know, I reported 5,000 bucks last year, mm. business might not be interested. But if you convert it into cost and say, if I, I and I say, I saved a million dollars for you, that is right. something that the business would be interested to hear about. Correct. So the ability to speak the business language and demonstrate the business value of testing is something that testers overlook. The last thing is uh, the understanding of the underlying system or the system architecture. A lot of testers that I have met and you know I have interviewed, unfortunately, they don't go in deep of uh, the system architecture. They do not know what is under the hood. So somewhere uh, testers stay away from uh, you know going to that white box level. Mm. But but going there will can make a huge impact uh, to to testers right. and their users. So I think these are the four things that testers uh, consciously or unconsciously ignore these days. I mean, this four of these are very important. We cannot ignore any of these. The four you mentioned. Yeah. Still, I yeah. specifically like one part. Testers should speak business language. People yes. are getting so much confused between the communication as quality of tester, but this communication aligned with business language is what actually needed for a tester. That's perfect. Exactly. And you mentioned in the, in the last point that testers should focus on solution system architecture and that kind of technical stuff. Prashant, my question on this is, so we in the race of growing and learning, uh, hmm. definitely, undoubtedly, technology plays crucial role. But I want right. to understand, is there any, are there avenues for your personal and professional development that 
gives growth opportunity for tester apart from technology and this new you know methodologies and those birds was are definitely coming but what could be other avenues for tester to you know learn and focus on for their growth so this is a really good question so technical skills as you said are important but mm -hmm. uh, soft skills also play a very important role uh, for a tester to be successful because yeah. Testing is a social activity. It's a techno social activity, right? So soft skills play equal role as that of technical uh, skills, right? Both 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 have to be balanced. A good tester has a combination of both technical as well as soft skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is because as I said, software testing is a social activity. Testers have to speak with so many different people. We just spoke about communication. If you look at the state of testing report, for the last four or five years, communication is ranked as the number one skill that the tester needs. As we right. said, communication, uh, again, ability to speak the business language when required, ability to speak the technical language when required, ability to sp speak in a way the other person in a different role understands yeah. is what is the differentiator. Again, communication is one thing, but also there are other soft skills, whether it is leadership, being mm. a team player, having a good attitude. Yeah. Uh, right. So if I have to summarize, tech skills or technical skills will help you to land in a job that you want to, mm -hmm. but soft skills will take you really far. They will help you to uh, grow and succeed in your career. That is really important. I mean, people should understand that not only getting the job, but also being yes. there and, and excelling that particular yeah. aspect is important. Yeah, I, think, I think soft skills is what differentiates an average tester from a good tester, right? Yeah. That is what will take you really far. Right. So that's my next question. Actually, you covered that part as well. So the skill that separates excellent tester from rest is a big, big question that everybody in the community is asking. And I think the answer lies upon the qualities or attribute that defines mm. the growth in our profession, right? So, and you also mentioned that you take, take interviews, you talk to a lot of people. So yes. what, according to Prashant, are the qualities for a best person, a best tester in, in our profession? So if you have to say the best tester, uh, so I would say the best tester is the one who realizes and acknowledges that there is no te best tester. There is only good tester. <laughs> uh, being a best tester probably is a journey and never a destination. But yeah. however, speaking about good tester, uh, there are 16 qualities that I have noticed in mm -hmm. a good tester. Again, uh, so for that, I have, you know, since this is four, uh, we have significant, you know, emphasis on four. So I have something called as four A's, four C's, 4 P's and 4 S. Let me explain. Wow. Okay. So starting with 4 A's, the 4 A's are uh, assertive, analytical, attention to detail and asking question. Okay. And right. going to 4 C's, 4 C's are creative, curious, critical, collaborative. Yeah. Going to 4 P's. Okay. 4 P's are proactive, passionate, persistent and patient. And lastly, yeah. we have four S. Four S's are skeptical, social, uh, skilled, and finally, seeking knowledge and sharing them continuously. These are the 16 <laughs> qualities that a tester should have. Again, I have just barely scratched the surface with these 16 things. But there is one more quality. I think you also spoke about that. That is adaptability. Yeah. So if you look at nature, uh, the animals that have survived today are the ones that were able to adopt mm. and uh, they were able to adopt to the changes that happened for millions of years and they are here today right similarly a good tester is someone who continuously evolves to meet the needs of the business the one mm. who continuously evolves uh, with the advancements in technology that is a good tester mm. a good tester never makes assumptions but always challenges assumptions so to summarize, a best tester would be, or a good tester would be someone who exceeds the expectations of the business, who exceeds yeah. the expectations of his team and does whatever is required uh, to, to, to ship a software, help ship a software that exceeds the expectations of the customers. So it's very hard to you know, say who is a good tester, but 
a long answer, but all these qualities probably uh, will make a really good tester. Excellent. Excellent answer to that. I mean, you said that there are no good tester, but there is always best an answer to the question. And this is the best answer of this question. I know for there, there is a reason why you are international speaker and why people love to hear you. That's your quality of how you articulate things. And it's, it's amazing to see how you have categorize yes. those and all those things are it's excellent yeah i think i have barely scratched the surface there are definitely much more uh, than what i have said but yes that kind of uh, summarizes what i so the to intention say. of this short cast are also just to that you know let people know that this is surface and then there could be a detailed discussion around that so you are Agreed. You are helping me to, you know, serve the purpose of my episode. Thank you so much for this. So my next question okay. to this, and it is important for everyone to know, you know, what are the references, the learning materials, what you use to learn and what you want to suggest people to go and uh, get help from? Because in the journey of growing, uh, learning hmm. material plays significant role. So what hmm. is your uh, go to option for this and what do you want to suggest to my audience okay so usually there are four things that i usually refer to uh number one is uh, you know my best friends are books i learned yeah. a lot of things from reading books number two is blogs i read a lot of blogs and i blog myself so i have learned a great deal from blogs third is courses when i want to it depends on what i want to learn so yeah. if i want to learn about a new topic i probably read a book or you know read blogs related to that topic if I want to develop a new skill, I take up courses. Uh, yeah. There are ample of courses available online. And the fourth thing is community. Okay. Yeah. So I am I'm involved in a lot of communities, including the test chat. So I learn from the conversations that happen in the communities. I learn from the uh, meetups, webinars, conferences, experiences from uh, other peers in the industry. Yeah. The test chat itself has a great YouTube channel. The testers speak has abundant resources yeah. there. You can learn from other testers, their knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I consume from all these different sources, but post-consumption, right, it matters what you do. So what I usually do is I create uh, notes. I create mind maps of the topics that I have learned. Mm. Okay. And I keep uh, enhancing them as and when I learn more about that topic. And then when I want to recall that topic, mm. I go back to my notes. It helps me mm. to kind of uh, uh, recall that topic. So if I can just pull my notes. So I always keep it handy. So if, if you can see this, not sure if it is visible. Yeah. Oh, yes. The mind map of how you can write proficiently. Okay. How to be a good writer. Uh, a lot of things like that. Right. Here is one about mental models. Here is one about uh, critical thinking. So I have notes for each and everything that I want to learn. So I, I go back to these notes and I consume from them, right? Mm. I consume from different sources, make notes, and I recall them from the notes that I do. Yeah. Uh, and what I would suggest to the audience is a little unconventional from how people usually, you know, learn. So I learn a lot of things by writing. So when I write, I learn a great deal because when I want to write about a topic, Mm. Right. So I have to do a lot of R&D myself. The same thing, if they say that if you want to learn something, you have to teach it to someone. So similarly, yes. when you are creating a presentation or talking uh, in a conference, right, it's the same process. Again, you are doing a lot of R&D yourself. You are uh, making yourself prepared for the questions. So this whole process itself is making you, you know, a master of a particular topic. Mm. So I would suggest that you know, just do this experiment. If you want to know how well you know about a topic, try teaching it to somebody or start writing about it. You'll realize how much you really know about the topic <laughs> when you sit down and write. Right. So, so these are the two things that, uh, uh, you know, the audience can do and also consume from books, uh, blogs, courses, and communities. Community. To be, to see. Well, yeah, I think uh, the... the overall answer to this question was not only what you do but also how you do and also how it can help others to do that it's absolutely intelligent answer i would say when you show that note it's uh, yeah. it's not only just a note i also make note i have entirely rough book but that doesn't look like a rough book it's a intelligently designed book so you have interest to look into it my notes only i or some 
somebody who is doctor or in medical shop can read <laughs> no one else i think even my notes you know it's only tailored for me it's like i i can consume from it but you know i add this visual element so that you know the notes do not become uh, slightly boring yeah it's it's really it's really great awesome. perfect it's short cast but then you covered immensely important things so deeply i'm so thankful prashant that you covered that but again i want to request you if there is any last statement before we conclude any last message uh, to my audience or anything that you want to talk about testing development that we discussed today so i just have one message for all the audience there yeah so uh, the message is take pride in what you do i am proud to be a tester and you should yeah. be too see majority of the testers are accidental testers i was also yeah. an accident tester but however i fell in love with the craft once you know over time when i started learning about it the thing is we need to stop uh, undervaluing our craft and uh, underestimating ourselves as testers because the work that we do matters it's meaningful uh, the work that we do actually impacts you know millions of people uh, the digital space is so reliable because of the work that we do yeah right so we make the lives of the people better by the work that we do so never look down upon testing or never underestimate yourselves to be a tester so yeah. to I, my message is be really proud of what you do because your job really matters the work that you do is awesome that's all i have. it's it's amazing it's it's really a great profession to be proud of uh, yes. and you mentioned be proud of what you do i am so proud of doing this kind of episodes now with people like you so thank you so much for igniting that aspect in my mind thank you so much prashant it was amazing uh, talking to you it was certainly a pleasure thank you bye